Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm super excited to talk about this new update that Figma has introduced to grids. Now grids have different types of properties. Like for example, a grid row or a column can now actually hug the content inside of it. It can scale based on the content that's inside of it. And you can have different fractional units for grids. Now, what does that all mean? Figma actually released a video where they talk about like how the, the bunch of things that you can do, but they do not go into detail explaining these things, which is why I'm doing this video. And I'm gonna show you how to actually use these grids and what these new updates actually mean. Now imagine I have a layout like this. Currently, this is actually a flex horizontal with a wrapping um, capability, but now I'm just going to go ahead and make it a grid. Now this is a grid and I can like by default just do this. And previously what you, we used to do, obviously, we used to say that, hey, once a grid is defined, if I let's say scale it, it's not really gonna scale. If this content expands, I then have to like, for example, let's just go ahead and actually expand it. If this content or this element is expanding, I then have to go do something like this. Then I have to come here and expand these things as well and stuff along those lines. But now we don't actually have to do that. Like I have to expand this, so on and so forth. But now we don't have to do all of that. What we can do now is we can do a bunch of different things. Like for example, I have a grid here. We see a bunch of elements here. If you press shift and I, let's say, click on this, I click on this, I, let's say, click on this, I can see all of the grid properties on the right in terms of sizing. I can decide if the columns, which are these one, two, three, are going to be filling the container of the grid or are they going to be, let's say, a particular size. So I have the options of fill, which is fractional units. I have hug and I have fixed content. If I say fixed, obviously that should you should know what that means. That basically means even if I expand this whole thing, this particular element is gonna remain the same size. And if we do like, let's say the height in the same manner, that's going to be the same as well. Now you're gonna say, okay, that looks good. But why Asad doesn't do these contents don't expand? Well, that's the reason I'm sure most of my followers know is because we haven't set uh, a fill container on this particular inner element. So now this <clears throat> first grid item is going to maintain a width of a particular size and all of the other ones are going to scale responsively. If I want this to proportionally scale as well, I can obviously go and click on this and say that this is going to be one FR and then all of these things are gonna scale proportionately. There are a few other things that we can do now is if we actually just click on that and go to this panel, I now have these properties as well. I can say that even though I have three columns, I can still say that in these three columns, the size of this particular one is going to be twice the size of the other side. Like for example, if I do this, now we have a 50% uh, element here and 10, 25%, uh, 25% element size here because this is two FR and both of these are one FR, one FR. Fractional, fractional units are basically like fractions, right? So depending on how many fractions I have, like two, one, one, even though this is a grid that actually only has three columns, they are distributed into four fa fractions. And I can go ahead and decide that. I can even say, hey, they shouldn't, these three grids or three columns in the grid should actually be distributed into five fractions. So now this particular element takes three fraction amount of space and both of these take one fraction, one fraction. So you have that capability now as well. <clears throat> I don't actually wanna do that. Uh, maybe if I want to actually have this box slightly larger than the other, yet also keep it responsive, what I can do is I can actually reduce these sizes slightly and say that the timer is going to be large, but all of the other ones are going to be slightly smaller than that. And if we actually have a look at what that means, that basically means one plus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75. The, these are like 2.5 in total. And on the 2.5, this is going to be one FR and whatever that percentage actually translates to. So that's amazing. That's a new feature that they've introduced. And let me just fill this container as well. And as you can see, I filled the container, but a lot of people may be confused. Hey, I wanted to fill the container, but I wanted to fill the container for two columns. I can obviously go ahead and just do two here and that's fine or I can normally just click go here and expand that. I think this particular feature was there already and this is not a new introduction and I can fill this container as well. <clears throat> so that's really nice. I have 380 pixels and 380 pixels. And now I can say that this particular element is going to be hugging the content. 
And when, as soon as I do that, as you can see, it's going to expand and the grid is going to expand. Now, if I want all of these elements to actually consider the height of this particular element and expand, I can just go here and I can say fill container. I can go here and I can say fill container and they are going to fill the height. And obviously I can go ahead and make sure that this particular element that's here gets to be in the middle or something along those lines. But we're going to fill this container and all of the content inside of it is going to be centered. So now this is going to respect uh, things um, vertically and we're going to select both of these boxes and say fill container here. And you can do the same thing here and basically make these elements centered. And again, how to do that, you basically just expand it, center, and then you go here, you expand it and then centered. And now if I add more items to it, as you can see, my grid is responding to that particular size change. If I remove them, they're back to their original size. And that's now I think a huge power with grids where grids can actually expand based on their content. Very similarly, if we have to do the same thing here, let me just go ahead and detach this component. I go here, this is already saying that this particular row of element is going to hug the content. So if I, for example, go here and I add more items, this is not showing me uh, the expanded columns because the height of this particular, not the row, but the content inside is not saying hug contents. But if I do that, obviously that respects it. And I can say, this is going to be filling the container and this all looks good. Now, if the content increases, my grids are gonna scale proportionally. If my table increases, the grid is gonna scale. If my table reduces, everything's gonna scale. And that's freaking amazing. So I think that's pretty much it for this video because I think this would help you now use the grid sizing features to create very different layouts. If you want me to actually go in a video where I create like multiple layouts using grids and using these powerful features, definitely let me know in the comments and I can create a video for that or try to create one, no promises. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.